doing today? Doing great. Um, you, you look marvelous, girl. I'm I'm impressed with with you. You uh, <laughs> seem like you're getting you're glowing more in your pregnancy. Oh my, glowing. Yes, uh, I, well, I think what's helping with the glow is I have a change of scenery. I have a little bit more light on me today. And so it's helping with my glow. You're glowing as well. I think pregnant women, and at least my experience over the years, pregnant women tend to glow. And especially as they get closer to the delivery of that baby. It's, it's, it's an unusual kind of a glow that I'm talking about. Uh, in addition to your beauty, it, it has to do with just a glow that comes with being pregnant. Well, thanks. It's a, it's an unusual time, that's for sure. So we're excited, but uh, we're also, I'm excited, but I'm also like you're trying to live in the moment, trying to enjoy it while we have, you know, while we have things the way they are. So yes, <clears throat> if you're just joining us, welcome. My name is Kim Osborne. Um, my maiden name is Roach because I am the daughter of Dr. Tony Roach, who is the author and creator of the God's Love Bank program and curriculum that's been used for 30, 40 years now. Um, God's Love Bank is, uh, well, Dad, let me let you give a brief little, a brief little blurb. What is God's Love Bank? Just give us a, something brief. God's Love Bank is a program, thinking, a program for living and a curriculum for teaching. It consists of 15 core values of Jesus, the most successful human being who's ever lived, and 15 systematic spiritual tools of thinking that helps you to internalize the core values of Jesus when you take on the mind of Christ. Absolutely. Um, God's Love Bank has been implemented in churches all over the world. My dad has spoken to thousands of people all over the country, all over the world with, for him, I think it's been one mission in mind. My dad, what I know of him is he always wants to help people. Um, that has always been the underlying thing that's dr driven him is he just wants to help. He wants people to have happy, healthy lives and especially happy, healthy, healthy spiritual lives. So um, God's love make has just been a blessing to my life um, and then many other people. As a matter of fact, if you're watching right now, if you have been a part of the God's Love Bank program or it's blessed you, give me a big me or a heart or, or let us know there. Um, we have people, dad, that watch pretty much from all over. Um, yesterday, I was asking where some people were from. We have people from New York and people from Texas and people from Bermuda and people just from all over. So it's really cool to see where everyone's from. I've conducted God's Love uh, Bank uh, workshops and almost all of the states in the United States, except for a few. Uh, and, and then I had the privilege of going on the Oprah Winfrey show when you gave me the title, A New Approach with Dr. Roach. And people from all over the country voted to help me to get my video out of 193 million votes, 27,000, I mean, 29,000, uh, additions, I mean, face-to-face -face additions, auditions rather, uh -huh. came out number five. And that's how I got on the Oprah Winfrey show. And then uh, the rest is history. We got we to gotta do more of getting God's love bank global. And that's what we're trying to do now. Yeah, for sure. And one day, Dad, I think it would be so interesting to talk about your experience on the Oprah Winfrey show. Um, not today, because I know we don't have time, but I think that's just an interesting story and definitely one that shows God's power. So, yes. Um, let's go ahead and recap what we've talked about really quickly. Yesterday, um, you talked about ways that people could shake spirits, uh, sh could shake anxiety, fears, and doubts that they may be having. Um, just a little tidbit did you know that the Texas governor has just officially closed schools for the for the whole entire school year it's about you know that it's about time i think that that yeah that, that had to take place yes yeah yeah they definitely they they made it official i mean it's been kind of what we've been thinking but they made it official um that to say there's a lot going on in the world things are changing and some people are handling it very well and it's 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 
something that they're able to cope with and other people are struggling because they're 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 letting fears and, and worries kind of overcome them. They're needing something. So we've been talking the past few days about different tools that can be used to help those who are struggling and needing help with, with shaking some of the fears and anxieties, yeah. right? Yes. So yesterday you talked about how to use, um, you talked about how to use the soul. Um, you talked about how we are all threefold spiritual beings. We are spirit, souls, and we live in bodies. And that's called the God's right? Love Bank rationale. The God's Love Bank rationale includes spirit, soul, and body. Go right ahead, baby. Yes, spirit, soul, and body. And so you talked about whichever one we invest in most wins. So you, you talked about how our soul, which is our personality, is, um, is the part of us that is kind of slave to our spirit and our body. Let me rehearse. Uh, okay, yeah, go ahead. Let, let me rehearse it real quick so mm -hmm. we can move on with that and get to mm -hmm. this other part. Okay, we talked about the God's Love Bank rationale. You've already mentioned that we're spirit, soul, and body. I am a spirit. I have a soul. I live in a body. My spirit is the real me. My soul is my personality, and my body is the house that, my live, that I live in. You are a spirit. You have a soul. You live in a body. Your spirit really is the real you. It is in charge of your new self. Your body is really the false you. It is the old self you. It's in charge of, of your old self, but your soul is the bank itself. So we covered basically uh, a number of tools of thinking. We covered the prayer macro strategy. I believe Monday it was, we, no, Monday we covered love deposits and withdrawals, right? Then we covered the, the prayer macro strategy, the daily prayer macro strategy. Then we covered a number of other tools like the thermostat of the soul yesterday. And, and we found that whichever is the stronger or wiser investor, the spirit, which is in charge of the new self, or the body, which is in charge of the old self, will dominate and take control of the bank of the soul. And there's a battle going on inside the soul which is really determined by two types of deposits and withdrawals. Love withdrawals has to do with what? Everybody hold your hand up. Fear, worry, doubt, pain, and bad news. Fear, worry, doubt, pain, and bad news never accomplishes anything, but it does create anxiety and fear, and it leads to a number of other things. But the other side of this, uh, where the spirit does its deposits is based on what? Faith, hope, love, purpose, and good news. So what we're learning then is that we make a deposits or withdrawals in our body. We talked about that. We make deposits and withdrawals in our soul. Yesterday, we talked about the three dimensions of loss of soul. We talked about the thermostat of the soul. We talked about the five departments of the soul. Do you remember the five departments of the soul? Your health. Health. Wealth. Relationship. Relationship. Career. Career. And what? And your salvation. And your salvation. So at any given time, mm -hmm. when you have poverty of the soul, it affects all five of those departments. Your health, your wealth, your relationships, your career, and salvation. When you have prosperity of the soul, it affects your health, your wealth, your your, your relationships, your career, and your salvation. And that's when we talked about a little more of how to deal with anxiety and fear with the soul. And that brings us to where we are right now. Right, we're, today we're talking about our spirit. So that was a lot of information. And if you want more about that, definitely go back and check the other shows that we've done this week because he goes into more depth about that. But just in general, if I wanted to break it down super simple, if you're dealing with fears and anxiety, he talked about how your spirit or your body, one of the two is going to win. Uh, we talked the other day about how the body operates. And today we're going to talk about how the spirit operates, because if you can control yourself with your spirit, then the rest of you will follow. So today, Dad, the question is, how can some people who are really dealing with a spirit of fear during this time what are some things that they can do that can help them get through this? 
That's the I like the way you said it. How you shape the spirit of fear. Okay. Everybody is dealing with fear. Even the people who think they're not, everybody is dealing with fear. And the reason for that is, is because fear does not come from God. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, the Bible says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of sound mind. Now, if God didn't give it to us, who's giving it to us? The devil. So fear is always connected to the devil because it's false evidence appearing real. F, false, evidence appearing real. So what's happening is people are struggling with fear, whether they know it or not, it creates anxiety. Actually, it creates worry, then anxiety. Then it leads to depression, hopelessness. And so we got a lot of people who are afraid of things like, I'm afraid I'm going to lose my 401k. I'm afraid that I may give up and quit. I'm afraid of the unknown. I'm afraid of being laid off, losing my job. I'm afraid of the Corona 19, COVID 19, Corona virus. We know what you mean. The COVID 19 virus. Okay, that's the that's the yeah. clinical term for it. But uh, the Corona virus, a lot of people are afraid they're gonna die. They're afraid they're going to get sick. And then we have to deal with people who are already sick, who are already struggling. Mm -hmm. Some people have cancer. Some people have leukemia. Some people have different types of, of diseases. And then you come along and, and you got to deal with this COVID-19 virus. That's a fear. And that fear then makes them have to deal with anxiety. So we got to deal with how does the spirit, the human spirit, deal with the fear of all the things that we mentioned. Okay, so that's what we want to talk about. Now, yeah. let me give you some background on this spirit. So your spirit is the real you. When you look up, when you look at me, when I look at you, I see a beautiful, young, African-American pregnant woman. Thank God for that. Okay, but that's not who you really are. That's your house. So your spirit lives on the inside of your body, which is the house. Your soul also lives inside of your house. We talked about the soul, but the spirit is the real you. So when I talk to you, I'm talking to your spirit. Now your spirit does two things, thinks and talks. The Bible says as a man, think where? In his heart. And whenever the Bible uses in the New Testament, whenever the Bible uses the, the term heart, it also includes that spirit lives on the inside of the heart. He talks about women like this. He talks about the woman who wants to win her husband. He said, it's not the outward adorning of the wearing of gold or the braiding of hair, uh, which is a, a, a jewel in the sight of God, but it is the hidden person of the heart. Watch this now, which is the gentle and quiet spirit. In the New Testament times, Everybody knew they were spirits. John said, try the spirits. See if they are of God. So I read spirits. I don't have to be with a person 20 years to get to know them. All you got to do is take 20 minutes and get to know their spirit. I recommend that you spend time understanding your spirit is the real you. Check this out. You know, a lot of people are married, but they married the house rather than the person who live on the inside of the house. The person who lives mm -hmm. out of the house is a real person. I know people who've been married 30 and 40 years and never really got to know the person that they've been married to because they married the house. The problem with that is when you marry the house, sometimes the plumbing stopped working. Sometimes uh -oh. the electricity stopped working. Sometimes <laughs> people don't really know the person. So sometimes turn out the lights, talk to the person on the inside, talk to the person's spirit because that's the real person. What do you think about that? Uh, <clears throat> I think it's something, especially from a female perspective, that makes a lot of sense that, um, you know, you, you see some people in the, and you're like, wow, that's such a wonderful person. You know, I, I, I wish, I don't know, I, what are they waiting for? What are those guys waiting for? She's great. And, you know, and um, because, 
I think as women, we can see each other's spirits so easily, but then sometimes, I, I think I'm getting this off on a whole nother topic, but sometimes people, you, you can see men sometimes maybe focus more on the body and neglect the spirit sometimes. So I that makes sense to me in that sense. Almost always, almost always, almost always tend to focus on the biochemical part of a person. So the men focus on the body because that's the way we are wired, you see. But uh-huh. now women are focusing on the body. <laughs> true, <laughs> true. And that brother's cut, that brother is cut, you know. But the real person is the spirit. Now that human spirit, can be infiltrated with the evil spirit of fear. And when fear comes in, it creates the anxiety and the depression. And when I make multiple love deposits, or rather love withdrawals in the bank of my soul, then depression sets in and hopelessness sets in. Mm -hmm. And then you couple that, if I have a struggle in my body or if my body is vulnerable or if my body is sick, it can literally cause a, a type of anxiety that can be more lethal than actually the coronavirus itself. So what do we do with that kind of challenge? Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Like, I mean, I, I recognize all of these things are happening in people's lives. What, what can they do? You know, when we were first created, we were created spirits. Did you know that? God created us spirit, soul, and body. God formed man from the dust of the ground. Then he breathed into man the breath of life and man became a living soul. That's his threefold spiritual being. Now I could go all over the Bible showing that our whole spirit and body and soul are are preserved blamelessly. So we got to begin to see ourselves for who we really are. We are spirits. We have souls. We happen to live in bodies. Now, when I understand that, I have to approach fear from the perspective of who I am in the sight of God. Because when I begin to see myself properly, I can cope with fear. Guess where fear first infiltrates? Your spirit. Where? Your spirit. Mm. Then it moves to your soul. Then it moves to your body. Actually, mm-hmm. everything is created three times first. First in the spirit, then in the soul, then in the body. The spirit. So I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Get the thought. So are you saying that if it's if fear is first infiltrated in our spirit, that if we can stop it there, we can keep it from from making it getting into our physical absolutely to our body? That's exactly the information about threefold spiritual beings and the God's love bank rationale. My spirit, my spirit. That's my son David again. I I I'll talk with him later. I'm on I'm online, son. Uh, Are you on Facebook Live right now? I'm on. So how? So, Dad, when it comes to having to to stop the body, I mean, stop the 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 fear from getting to your body. Can you kind of give us what we can do about that? Okay, so let's understand that. First thing is we got to, we have to define ourselves like God defines us. God defines mm-hmm. us as threefold spiritual being. When we were created, spirit is king. The soul is always servant and the body uh, is slave. But when we allow fear to dominate, the body becomes king. The soul, the soul is always servant and then the spirit becomes slave. So now, if I allow my body to dominate because of fear, worry, doubt, pain, and bad news, which is old self-love logic, it dominates and takes control of my soul, and my soul then takes control of my spirit, and my spirit becomes slave. A lot of people have not defined themselves properly. He who holds the power to define holds the power to control. If the devil defines me, the devil controls me. So number one, begin to see yourself as God defines you. That's probably one of the most powerful things that you can do to stop the invasion of fear upon your body and your soul. Absolutely. that I, I think that's worth saying again. If the devil defines me, then the devil controls me. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. That is pow- that's so powerful because that alone 
can make a big difference. If we're if you're allowing fear to completely overtake you, who are you allowing to define you? That's why the Bible says God did not give us a spirit of fear. It always comes mm -hmm. from the devil. So let's do some practical things about how to deal with that. I want to introduce okay. a tool of thinking called the Holy Spirit's Triple A card. And if, okay. if you'll put that on the screen right now, uh, we can we can look at it. There it is. So let's be clear. Okay. The Holy Spirit communicates to our human spirit. And then our human spirit goes through the soul and communicates to our body. So the Holy Spirit is the antidote, if you will. It is the remedy. The Holy Spirit then is the, the thing that empowers my human spirit to cope with evil spirits that try to infiltrate my body through fear, worry, doubt, pain, and bad news. So here's the way the Holy Spirit triple A card works. First of all, let me define, Kim, if you'll take it off the screen for just one moment, I wanna clarify something else before we go there. Okay, so what we have to understand is we got to understand who the Spirit is, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. He's a person just like you and I. He's just physical. He, uh, I mean, he's just spiritual. He's not physical like you and I, but he is sensitive. He can feel, he can think, he can talk, he can will, he can love. All of these are scriptures in the Bible. He can communicate with us. He talks to us. We can talk to him. It's like me having a relationship with you. I have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And his number one purpose is he wants to commune with us. He want to walk with us and talk with us and spend time with us. So we have to acknowledge him, first of all, as a person. In the 16th chapter of the book of John alone, verse around 13, 14, and 15, Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as a person. He said, how be it when he, the spirit of truth shall come. He shall guide you into all truth. He shall do this, him shall do that. He kept referring to the Holy Spirit as a person. The Holy Spirit is not a it, it's not a thing. It's not a Holy Ghost. The, the notion of the Holy Ghost was used during King James time and they referred to it as the Holy Ghost, but he is not a ghost. That makes people think he's like Casper, the friendly ghost and some of the evil ghosts. He is a human, he is a spirit rather. He is a holy person. He's a perfect gentleman. He never forces himself on you. He never pushes himself on you. And let me hasten to say that sometimes a lot of us will limit the Holy Spirit to the word. Well, the Holy Spirit is not limited to the word. However, he never contradicts the word. Why would he contradict himself? Because the Holy Spirit created the word. All scriptures is given by the inspiration of God. The inspiration there is talking about the Holy Spirit for correction, for instructions. So the Holy Spirit works in conjunction with the word, but it is not limited to the word and it never contradicts the word. So my point here is we gotta begin to see the Holy Spirit as your best friend. The Holy Spirit sticks closer to you than a brother. He is a person, he's gentle, he cares, he loves, he feels, and you know what? I got a relationship with the Holy Spirit where he's my best friend. So sometimes when you're dealing with your fear, you got to start talking to the Holy Spirit. Communicate to the Holy Spirit. Let him communicate to you. Listen. And somebody says, well, how does, how does the Holy Spirit sound? He sounds like your own thoughts. I mean, if, if, if God can use your spirit, your soul, your body, your conscience, your strength, why can't he use your thoughts and your voice? Well, the Holy Spirit will we, let you know. Go right ahead. You know, I mean, if you think about it, you talk about using your own thoughts. When you think about um, those the fearful thoughts, it sounds like yourself, right? You know, it sounds like it sounds like I'm scared. I don't know what to do. Things like that. So why couldn't the Holy Spirit sound like you? You you hear something, right? Absolutely, and you can feel the difference. The Holy Spirit always operates in the moment. He doesn't operate in the past or the future. He operates in the moment. And he always operates based on faith, 
hope, love, purpose, and good news. Now, the devil doesn't operate like that. The devil has a timeline. Mm -hmm. He'll try to get you preoccupied with the past so he can rob you of the power of the moment. The, the mm -hmm. devil will come in and get you focused on problems of the past. When you wake up in the morning, first thing he'll do is try to get you thinking about the problems of the past or something where you got hurt because he based it on fear, worry, doubt, pain, and bad news. So I got to be mm -hmm. listen like this. When, when a thought comes to my mind, is it a deposit based on faith, hope, love, purpose, and good news? Or is it a withdrawal based on faith, hope, love, purpose, and good news? Now I am able to say, the Lord rebuked that thought, Satan. I'm not taking that thought. The Lord canceled that. I'm not taking that withdrawal. And then when he gets on my case and keep bothering me, then I just say, in the name of Jesus, and you rebuke the devil. That's called a prayer of binding and losing. That's a whole other, that, whole other story. Well, you know, that kind of reminds me of you see on the TV shows where the people will have an angel on one shoulder and a devil on the other shoulder. Absolutely. And both are speaking in their ear and then they, they tell one of them to go away. That's a that just reminds me of that. See, and, and a lot of times what we do is we limit God because we don't think in terms of being spiritual. Do you know the first person that God talked to in the beginning? Adam. So communication is designed to talk to God. So I maintain my single most important relationship with God. And listen, I want to introduce now a tool of thinking into God's love bank program that's probably one of the most powerful. All okay. of powerful. It's called the Holy Spirit's triple A card. Now put it on the screen. All right. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Here's the way the Holy Spirit triple A card works. It kind of works like the triple A card works with the car and automobile industry. You know, there's a company called the triple A company. They're basically designed to help you when you get stuck, to come help you fix your car, you can get your maps. You can get directions from them. The whole, the uh, AAA uh, uh, card is designed to be there for you when you need it, when you're in a crisis, when you're in a situation that you get stuck, your battery breaks down, your tire get flat. You just use your AAA card. And wherever you are in the United States, then uh, there will be a servant. A servant will come and help you to get back on your feet or get the car running or whatever. Well, the AAA card is very similar. God will give you direction. How be it when he, the spirit of truth shall come, he will guide you into all truths. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And by the way, the Lord there is the proper name for Jehovah and Yahweh. It also includes the spirit. And for those who wanna really go into it, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 and 18 said, the Lord is the spirit. Okay, so the Lord is the spirit. Now, now trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Here's the way you use the Holy Spirit's triple A card. Okay, you're dealing with a situation that's difficult. You don't know what to do. So take the situation and acknowledge the Holy Spirit as Lord. By the way, if you don't acknowledge him as Lord, you can't expect him to be your Lord. A lot of times we won't acknowledge the Holy Spirit. He's there right there with us. He's working there with us, but we don't acknowledge him. So number one, Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, first A, acknowledge the Holy Spirit as Lord. By the way, God is the Lord of the universe. Christ is the Lord of the church, but the Holy Spirit is the Lord of my heart. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. The second A is Luke chapter 13, verse number 11. Jesus told them at that time, he says that the Holy God will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. So first A, acknowledge the Holy Spirit as Lord. The second A, ask him to help you in your particular situation. Let me give you some situations. Here's, here's some withdrawal thinking at this time of the COVID-19 virus. And I wanna thank Crystal Iris and Jason Iris for sending me this information. They use the God's Love Bank uh, program and curriculum on the island of Bermuda. So they know about love deposits and love withdrawal thinking. So 
uh, they sent me this. Here is withdrawal thinking. I'm stuck in the house doing this COVID-19 virus. Don't think like that. Turn that withdrawal to a deposit and say, I'm safe in my house and I'm spending time with my family. Kim, come back on. I want to ask you something here. You can take it. Now, one of the great blessings of a deposit that everybody's at home in their house is the mm -hmm. time you can spend with your family. Sometimes children can give you a run for your money. Am I right about it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> How many times have you had the privilege now to spend time helping your children know how to think on their on their schoolwork. I was talking to one of our, mm -hmm. uh, our, our elders, uh, Gerald Wilkerson, and Gerald was telling me how he had the great opportunity to see how his son thinks in school. Now think about that. Mm -hmm. You have a chance to see how your child thinks and now you can help them think when it comes to their homework, when it comes to how they handle things. That is a great, great benefit, you see? So don't say mm -hmm. I'm stuck in the house. Say I'm safe in the house and I got time to spend with my family, spend with my children. Have you been enjoying that, Kim? My grandchildren? Yeah. Yeah, actually, I was in my prayer macro this morning and that was one of my, my P, my praises, is that um, we had been so busy. Um, it was hard to focus on the baby and focus on the transitions we were gonna about to go through. Um, but God has given us time as a family unit to be together um, before we go through transition. And that has been a blessing. So for sure. okay, here's another one. I am going to run out of food. Look at that withdrawal thinking. Don't say I'm going to run out of food. Say I'm prepared with everything I need for how for now. And I will plan to use my time and my items wisely, including toilet paper. Do you know that there, yeah. there's a woman in, in Dallas who her business has blown up because she she was losing money and she decided to make cakes look like toilet paper and people are buying her cakes <laughs> like crazy. You know why? I think I saw that. <laughs> We're beginning to value things that we didn't value, such as toilet paper. You're not going to run out of food. Plan, use your food wisely and you'll be all right. So, Dad, can we um, can we go ahead and finish the rest of the triple A and then um, talk more about some of these ways that we can can transition? Because I don't want us to run out of time. OK, put it back. OK, sure. OK, while we're doing that, you got to acknowledge the Holy Spirit in your situation. Then you ask the Holy Spirit to help you, lead you and guide you in your situation. And the third A is probably the most powerful, but the most challenging then you have to abide with the Holy Spirit. First John chapter three, verse number 24. And another pastor says the same thing. You must abide with the Holy Spirit all the way until the end of the situation to get your answer. Now that's where the problem comes in for some of us. We'll acknowledge the Holy Spirit is Lord. We'll ask him to help us, but then we have to abide with him in the situation all the way until the completion of it. And I have done this multiple times. And I'm telling you, when you get to the completion of it, that's when the perfect comes. That's when you come to an understanding like you never had before, but you got to use all three of the A's. That's why it's called the Holy Spirit's triple A card. That's how you get in spirit with the Holy Spirit. Okay, Kim, now you can come back home. So my quick question to you is, can you give me, can you walk me through an example of someone walking through the triple A card? Okay. Give me a situation. So let's say that I'm, okay. So let's say that I am a per person that is right now, I am just really feeling anxious. Um, I, I'm trying not to, but I am just struggling and I'm feeling anxious and I need help. Okay, let's say I'm scared that I will get sick with the COVID-19 yeah, virus or sure. that I will get sick in general because it would it would uh, kind of uh, uh, bring down my immunity system. Okay, mm -hmm. take that withdrawal. Here's the tool of thinking, love deposit and withdrawal. Turn it to a deposit. Don't say I'm scared that I'm going to get sick. 
say, I'm going to do everything in my control to make sure I keep myself healthy. Such as is that how I acknowledge? Is that is that how I acknowledge? What what does acknowledge look like? Okay, such as turn mm -hmm. withdrawals into deposits. Okay, now let's say for example I get sick. Okay, now I got a situation. The first thing I do is acknowledge the Holy Spirit, Lord. You are sovereign. You are God. You are Jehovah Rapha, God the Father, God the Son. God, the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you the third person in the Godhead. You have the same power that God has and Jesus has. And so, a Holy Spirit, I want to talk to you about what I'm going to pray to the Father about. Listen to this. It's one thing to talk to the Holy Spirit. It's another thing to pray to the Father. So I talk to the Holy Spirit about my situation. Holy Spirit, I'm, 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 I acknowledge you as my Lord. And I need you to help me to know what to say to the Lord when I pray to him. And so you acknowledge him. And, and Holy Spirit, Jesus said, if I ask you, you will help me. And I believe that. And so I'm going to abide with you to the end of my situation. And the Holy Spirit may say something like this to you. Whenever the thought of being sick come up, say, by his stripes, I am healed. Isaiah chapter 53, verse number five. 1 Peter chapter one, verse number 24. So the thought comes up, man, you're gonna get the COVID virus, the COVID-19 virus. By his stripes, I am here. Mm -hmm. Man, I got, a, I got a bruise on my arm and it looks like it's coming from something that I don't know. By his stripes, I am here. You gotta continually, continually use the power of your tongue to make love deposits rather than love withdrawals. Thought comes, man, I think I'm coming down with the flu. Say, the Lord rebuked that, Satan. I'm not going to come down with the flu. I'm going to fight the flu. Am I making practical things that you, you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. And you got Yeah, and I love I love um, how you're giving examples of things that we can say and scriptures that we can say on our, our tongue. So I love it. Yeah, and you got to abide. You keep on, no matter what. Don't say what you want. Don't say what you see. Say what you want, okay? And you keep mm. on talking to yourself because you are programming love deposits in the bank of your soul and you abide with the Holy Spirit. Now he is empowering you. God has not given you a spirit of fear. Watch this now. Here's what he gave you. A spirit of power, love, and self-discipline, a sound mind. So you repeat those mm -hmm. things to yourself until you get to the end of your situation. And next thing you know, you healed of the cancer. You healed of the thing that you're dealing with. And by the way, God will protect you during this time of COVID-19 virus. Don't say what you see, say what you want. Yes. and I, That's powerful. Our time is, is gone, by the way. Yeah, I, I know. I know our time is gone. I think that's a good that's a good way to kind of to kind of wrap things up. If we focus on the things that we want and don't let the things that we might hear or see overtake us, then we can stay in spirit. And when we stay in spirit, trust the Holy Spirit. Develop your relationship with the Holy Spirit so he can be your best friend. I know a lot of people love their dogs and I think that's good. But your dog is not your <laughs> best friend. The Holy Spirit is your best friend. But we can to sometimes, and I don't mean this in a defensive way, we sometimes treat the Holy Spirit like a dog. Sometimes he want to commune with us. Sometimes he wants to spend time with us. Sometimes he wants us to spend time with him. And we will, you know, we used to have a dog. And every time I drive up in the driveway, he'd run over to the fence. And sometimes I would be so busy that I, I didn't have time to spend with the dog. So I act like he didn't exist. You see, or I go on about my business. We need to stop long enough and let the Holy Spirit know I'm communing with you. You are in charge. I'm listening to you. And that's what it means to abide with him until the end. Very good. I think that's, I think you said something that helped somebody. I hope you did. Hope. Um, yeah. And if you need to go back and listen to this again, because he really gives a lot of important nuggets that will bless you time and time again. So definitely listen to that. Dad, we won't be back tomorrow, right? Uh, 
We won't be back online tomorrow because tomorrow's Saturday. Right. But we will be back right. on Monday, right? Right. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and Monday. Sorry, go ahead. No, we'll be back on Monday. Mm-hmm. Unless the Holy yeah. Spirit, so we'll be back Monday. Unless, at- unless the Holy Spirit put in my spirit that we'd be on there tomorrow. But go ahead, baby. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Just, well, I, for no. now. Yeah, for now, we're scheduled to be back on Monday at 1 p.m. Central. Yeah. Um, and uh, if you want to kind of look for it, we always try to put it put it out there, remind you that we're coming on. Dad, do you have um, a little blurb of what they can expect for Monday? We're going to begin to talk about the old self and the new self because the old self is really creating old self-love logic, which causes fear, worry, doubt, and anxiety. And we're going to talk about the new self. Uh, And then we're going to show you what your old self is and what your new self is so you can be empowered. Because whichever is the stronger or wiser investor, the old self or the new self will dominate and take control of your soul. And we want to make sure that the new self is in charge of your soul. So tune in with us on Monday. Yes, lots of lots of powerful information. And those of you who have heard about old self and new self definitely share it with your friends because it's going to be it's going to be um a lot of great information um i think we're ready to sign off dad uh homework for those of you who um who know and have liked this program for a long time please make sure you follow the god's love bank page on facebook um check us out on godslovebank.com share love Give him a rating. If he, if he has blessed your life, give him a rating. He's new to Facebook. I um, uh, He finally hopped on and he is hopping on in an exciting, exciting way. And we just want to share the word with as many people as possible. So you would definitely help us if you could kind of share it, spread the word to the people that you know. Dad, with that being said, can you sign us off in a powerful way? Yes, this month, the core value of Jesus for this month is called new self power. And everybody who's plugged into the core value, I want you to think with me while I quote it. New self power, the power to choose my own response to what happens to me in life and to be proactive rather than reactive when I take action to get results, turning every withdrawal into a deposit through the power of life and death, which is on my tongue. Amen. And let it be so. You got the power. You got the power. All right, Dad. We're signing off. Y'all have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining us today. Amen. Bye-bye.